Hey everyone, welcome to the session. So today we'll be learning about AWS basics, but before that, I see uh, people are joining, so let's wait for everyone to join. Uh, it would be not wise to like start immediately. And let's see. Hey Manoj. Hey Alankrit, Chirag. Uh, sorry if I'm spelling it wrong. Uh, Emmanuel, uh, Ishwat, Harris, Man uh, Ma Marine, Nishad, Pradeep. Prashant, Rohan, Rohit, Sahil, uh, Sa Sai Charan, uh, Srirata, Vikas. So anyone joining, say hi to everyone because we have a big team here who is like, you know, you see, you are an entire team, right? People can talk to each other, you can uh, send the messages. And of course, don't uh, forget to tell from where, from where you are, uh, which background you are, what you're learning. This is the learning uh, time, right? So keep sharing all the details. Okay. And we'll be starting in suppose say two, three minutes because you know what happens that uh, when uh, I start the sessions, the notification start getting sending to people and uh, they get a mail, but since it's a query basis, so what is a query basis? Is if we, there is all the cloud providers, especially AWS or any cloud providers to be honest, they have one cap. You cannot send thousand email at once until unless it's provisioned. If you have provisioned, from the uh, AWS, that's fine. But in normal cases, there is a limit. For me, it is 14 uh, each, uh, I think uh, I can send 14 email in one second. So that kind of cap I have configured in my programming so that it will send only 14 emails per second. So that's why you guys have thousand persons, right? So that's how it goes on. Okay, uh, good. I uh, see everyone joining. Hey Rohan. And also, of course, uh, see, this is an interactive session. I can see the questions you're going to ask. I can see Nishad saying hello. Uh, so uh, Nishad saying hello, everyone. Uh, everyone saying hello, Angi saying hello. So it's an interactive session. So please go on and ask the questions. This session is completely for you. It's kind of a casual, I'm teaching, but it's a casual session. You have uh, no problem in asking any question and I have no problem answering the questions. So go ahead and ask the questions, okay. Okay, and uh, pre I think uh, previous session uh, I did was on uh, you know working day, and I'm sorry for that, guys, because last week si Sunday, like you know, in, in the this time itself, uh, I had to do some kind of uh, you know pre, pre recording kind of thing. So in Thursday, also, I have one pre recording for I think uh, DevOps. I don't know if you guys know about the DevOps meet or not, there I'm speaking, so that recording also I have to make uh, this Thursday. So you understand how much busy I'm getting these days. You know, people coming from all over the places and asking to do sessions for them. See, I am more than happy to do, but the problem is the time. So I don't have a lot of time. I'm a single person, right? So that is uh, one of the reasons I cannot do all the sessions. So I'm just, redirect I just directed them to other uh, good engineers. I personally know. Now it's up to them. They will be able to do or not. And uh, I, also, I, I think I forgot to say that, uh, one session I'll be having on a practical basis because this this session I was so practical but I'm planning for one workshop uh, where you know I kind of want you guys also can you know, do work maybe I cannot support all thousand persons but at least uh, I can select random 50 and make that video like I can share the video in YouTube or anywhere else where other people can follow so I have one such plan I don't know um, if I can do within next one or two week, but I will try. Okay. And of course I have created one Facebook, you know, group for you guys. Uh, let me start the, share the link so you guys can join that. And that group's actually good. I mean, uh, if you have any questions, it's not that I'm all the time available, but when I available, I, I see the, since the group I'm maintaining dedicatedly, if you have, have any questions, you can just simply ask that there also I can answer. So just give me a few seconds. While other people are joining, let me share the line, the link. Okay. And also, guys, uh, because the you know, studio lights are very bright to my eyes, that's why I've taken the glasses. So, in case you see, it's a problem. Since how? How can we see the precious training session in YouTube? Yeah, the precious training in the YouTube 
whoever are already part of the freshers uh, is it that learn aws basic i think yeah, this is the program there so let me come to that but before let me share the group link so you guys can join the group just a moment it's a good thing let's kind of think about the buffer so other people can join i will share something which can be helpful to you guys and uh, i was i was thinking of sharing one session with you guys about i think that uh, uh, bp i think bbc basic sessions already in my youtube channel uh, terraform session is in my youtube channel you guys can go and watch but let me share this link with you guys now this is the link so check the message section there i have shared one group link i want you guys to watch that one i mean not watch a visit and join not immediately but maybe at the end of you can do it now also because i was waiting for others to join hey prashant okay there's two questions so uh, facebook group link so how is yes uh, see in the uh, see there is a message section down below uh, there, there, there there you can see there is a uh, kind of you know uh, link section i have given see sandeep das and the facebook group link there you can see okay guys looks like everyone joined and i can start the session uh, how can we see the pressure training session so see pressure training session is uh, in youtube but it's for the normal like you have to become a youtube member if you are not part of this that uh, say that training plan you have to get i think it's less than 60 rupees or less than 1 dollar you can jo go to my youtube channel there is a join button click on join and once you do that you can see all the videos in my uh, my channel's home page itself in the member section so that is there because you know this kind of who, like if suppose uh, people are not part of the plan still they are able to see the plan they will say then what is the purpose of uh, having it dedicatedly just for the sake of kind of you can say making it extra special i had to add some small price tag but that's that is just nothing for anyone right that's why okay is devops training for everyone or else uh, only youtube paid no devops training um, that uh, that is the next i think uh, that is the next programming line which is the uh, master master class kind of thing uh, where we will cover the more advanced topics but in this uh, training i think this training session let me see i think there might be some devops part included if not i can think of a dedicated session but in the for the next one uh, that one i think uh, there is a chance that any any suppose in the freshers group or in that this training program group anyone can join that um, that one so just you have to after this program ends you can send me one mail sandeep i want to join this uh, next training program and i can join i can let you join that okay so that's part there as a tips of freshers to get job in the cloud devops i'll be coming to that at the end of this okay so yeah keep asking the questions i'll be definitely uh, have it uh, i think if it's a very important question then uh, instead of asking in the messages ask in the that ask question section because that actually is getting sending mail to my email id even if i miss it for any chance i can come to my email and check that if that uh, uh, question is not answered i can reply to that okay okay i think everyone joined and it's time to get started so let me start sharing okay so today's class aws basics and uh, so yeah first of things who are the guys do you know that who already know about aws please do let me know in the message so you know it will be happy to see there are some people uh, who i mean i will get this idea like who are the people already know a lot about uh, AWS and who are the people who don't know anything about AWS. So it will be good for my statistics purpose. Okay. So today we are going to learn AWS basics. Now what is AWS? AWS, I think I have explained that here itself. So yeah, AWS is one of the world's most comprehensive and broadly adapted cloud platform offering over 200 fully featured services from data centers globally millions of customers including fastest growing startups largest enterprises and uh, leading government agencies are using aws to lower the cost become more agile and innovative faster so just for example big companies okay i'm just talking about the big companies say apple uh, accenture cisco all the big companies you are you 
may ever had had the name about every single company even facebook every single company all the social media giants you can whatever you think of everyone like utilizing the services of aws okay now all the startups all the big companies all the small companies everyone anyone can afford a, any uh, kind of service you want to go and uh, use in aws you can definitely do it even the government agencies okay and they have a specific i will come to that in the next slides government agencies have separate kind of isolated section so they can have special services that also aws guys giving okay so it's kind of now again what is the cloud service provider i think in the last session we talked about what is cloud and all so we have you know cpu we need the ram we need the you know, continuation services we need all that right and this is aws or amazon web services who are giving all that to us on a month on a pay as you go basis so you have to either uh, you can reserve all that before you like before actual cost happens or you can go as pay as you go model at the end of the month you have to pay your pending bills this is how it happens this is how a service cloud service provider function okay now after that let's go okay so you know, when you are talking about the resources the you know machines the you know the load balancer the the where you want to host your instances now how to know where i want to host my machines simple golden rule here you want to be closer to your users okay your users means what suppose you're an indian company you have a grocery shop somewhere uh, say kolkata or in west bengal around somewhere right say suppose in kolkata okay and you want to give the services mostly the kolkata or maybe india but your main focus in kolkata just for the example so your primary goal should be that since my customer are targeted to kolkata which are the cloud service provider are giving me the servers nearest to the uh, kolkata or maybe any uh, data center nearest to the, have in kolkata so i can target i can purchase the resources or i can book the resources or i can utilize the resources in that particular uh, kolkata region or kolkata uh, that area so that people who are going to utilize my services they can request and their their request will reach to the kolkata server faster than it's the if it's in us because uh, suppose from this is the consumer and this is kolkata the distance model but it's suppose it's us and it's your user in kolkata the distance getting longer the, the more the distance the longer there is some microsecond of delay which for normal people is nothing but well, how the you know world is progressing uh, and all and if there is slow connection just in case okay that in that cases it's a big deal and you don't want to you know uh, you don't want to make that compromise you want to have a very faster connection you want to have your customer reach the service faster so that they can get the services and you can provide them services so they can see browse their or whatever product you are supposed to offer they purchase that faster and you get the money in your bank that's the entire goal so that is the reason you want it to be nearer to you that is why that is the that is the sole reason aws have a global infrastructure and what is global infrastructure they have regions what are the regions regions are the geographical locations say west bengal say delhi say mumbai say gujarat this is the regions okay aws have their service their data centers like a full of full building where uh, they have lot of sub, lot of uh, machines like computers uh, but in in the racks they have big big racks and then each rack blocks they have the um, instances like actual cpu actual ram actual storage and you can utilize all that you can rent all that anywhere in the world so you can see in the image itself they have 25 launch regions and 81 availability zone now what is availability zone i'll be coming in depth anyway but think about the regions what so region are geographically isolated not isolated but geographically separate locations where you can just go inside the, i mean if you are consumer in this particular region you should you not must but you should host your servers near to that so you can serve your customer better that's the reason now just as a overview as for global infrastructure aws have 25 launch regions remember that you don't have to it will not come in your aws exam it will not come it will not not interviewer will ask you that but it's good to know it's good to know where you can launch your services so you can see these are the geographic region all together if you i think you can guys able to see it anyway okay now uh, there are five local zones so like localized zones 
14 wavelength zones for ultra low range application but that costly okay three sorry 230 plus point of presence 218 plus edge location i'll be coming to edge location in this uh, session itself 12 regional edge caches okay so this is the global infrastructure now i'll go into a little bit more in depth about like what is what and all so very first thing what is availability zone i think i already talked a bit about the availability zones now what is availability zone okay so aws have the concept of region which is physical location around the world where they cluster their data centers and um, they call each group of local data centers as availability zone I told you right that i'll be coming to availability zone so suppose in a city or, in, uh, or just nearby cities we have a building okay and just to see the image itself okay in, in, in the image you can see uh, there is uh, one data cluster of data center and uh, like multiple buildings where you are hosting the instances the power services maybe the networking services the storage services uh, any kind of like the pay as go model any service coming to that then in that service uh, multiple buildings okay there are multiple buildings have the other resources so each clusters of building you are calling them like near at, nearby like uh, saying in the group we are calling them ability zone and in a region say in the mumbai they can have that kind of ability zone so multiple cl multiple cluster of data center is the ability zone and with multiple ability zone together we are calling it region so in the region they are supposed to have multiple ability zone and in each ability zone they are supposed to have multiple data centers okay so just as the thumbs up rule uh, the, like uh, rule of thumb one region is equal to multiple uh, ability zone but remember there must be three ability zones should be more than that but not less than three okay remember that and one uh, ability zone is equal to cluster of data centers so data centers are what building with all the storage is like cpu ram and all the resources running in that particular building okay so and uh, one tip here edge location i'll be coming to what, what edge, edge location is so edge location should be greater than ability zone and ability zone should be greater than the regions and i think from the explanation itself you understand the one region is a geographical area there will have multiple ability zone and each ability zone there will have a uh, will have uh, multiple clusters altogether or multiple buildings which have the computing resources so that's how we can we understand what is a region and what is ability zone there should be absolutely zero uh, uh, zero confusion between regions and ability zone if you want to excel in aws or any cloud service provider you have to have a very clear idea a very clear state of mind about this infra global infrastructure otherwise you will have conceptual issues so if it's uh, you think that you are having some understanding problem feel free to let me know in the questions and uh, i'm just giving you guys a few seconds or minutes if you want and i can see if you have any questions okay um so i can see a lot so you, just up to this what is region what is uh uh just any any kind of like any uh, question you have simply ask in the uh in either in the questions or in the message i can check both so let me see uh what are the messages so i said uh prasant saying hi sir tips for freshers to get job in the cloud for books i'll say that anyway prashant i know core services basic okay uh, Simran saying have basic idea which is good Avantika yes Harish no idea devils so don't worry it's a basic session anyway we'll learn uh, Harish so uh, it's uh, Siva okay it's Siva Krishna sorry if I'm saying the name wrong I have uh, knowledge but never done hands on so don't worry I am planning like after this is a basic series right after and i have another series for the experienced persons which you can attend but you have to let me know you have to attend all the session and uh, after that if you feel like you can all you're welcome to join uh, just let me know i will let you join okay so then, yeah so but let me first cover that all that uh, so sahil saying i have done till aws ssa that is aws solution i can associate but not a good chance uh, to work on projects aws projects till now and you know the fun part here you know you are in the as, uh, associate level even with the professional level persons coming to me, say, Sandeep, I have done professional degree, but still I don't have any experience of work on. I am saying, wow, people even without doing all the hard work, how can they get certification? And I get to know uh, that uh, he got it by cheat. 
so now that's a very bad thing i see other people doing but uh, you are in the ssa you are in the good part now do more hands on and get actual projects how to do get a project simply start posting the videos and articles about aws anywhere whatever in every platform okay every social platform then uh, start bidding in the freelancing side or maybe if you want to get a job start applying for big companies where they are targetedly hiring for aws and you will get a chance okay since you have aws certification for the associate level you have better chance than anyone else okay uh, it's uh, co section can you share that text so that i can consider on the takeaway yes i will share uh, maybe after this you know this is the youtube live session <laughs> but behind the scene is the youtube live uh, so after the session done it takes one day for the processing and after the processing done i will send you the this video link recorded version of high quality kind of i think so See, my camera is 4K, but maybe the video is coming to NATP. But that kind of high-quality video will get it. Okay, so don't worry. Is Pradeep saying that teaching is very simple, but unfortunately, I don't able to attend uh, completely. Will I get a recorded version? Yes, you will get it. It's Bini. Uh, it's Bini saying is it started. I am not able to uh, unable to see or hear anything. Uh, okay, it's. Uh, when i don't know but i think people other people are able to see that's why they were to ask the question in case you are not able to see it here just refresh the browser and log in again you will be able to see so one very good question here it uh, sishti asking sir what is logical data centers now think about like it's no it's either even the saying logical data centers but in actual data centers where it's a simple kind of say it's a big building where each kind of load they have uh, dedicated racks i don't know if you uh, can see let me try to so if i can show you the data center see logical means there are actual physical centers but you are managing via the web and also for to you it's a logical representation of the data server so let me show you guys what actually it looks like okay see this is how the data center looks like it's a building and uh, okay it's a building and you can see inside there in the racks every racks they have the like a machine cpu like a cabinet box in box they have uh, cool that you know cooler then uh, they have uh, uh, the motherboard they have the cpu in like uh, inputting that attached to that particular uh, uh, machine then they have the ram and it's more of a portable thing suppose one problem happen in any particular this rack they will uh, just open it they will purchase one new kind of say ram is having problem they will attach to that and they will push back to that uh, cabinet again that's that is what it looks like okay so that's what it looks like i, I think it's google one but uh, aws also have same same example So you can see here, these are the data centers look like. I had one chance in the Bangalore. I think for a company, I had to speak, and that company had their own data center. I had a chance to go inside the data centers, and it's so so hot. You know, it may look look like cool, but when you actually in the place, if they have a machine fault or like AC fault, or even even it's all machines running, sudden points of time, it's so hot. You can see that uh, people changing the racks. This is how it looks like they are managed. So this is a data center, and but you you don't manage all that you know by physically your hand or something. Like you just simply go to a browser to the particular cloud provider, and then you just say I want to uh, get this machine, but particular uh, say Ubuntu, we want to get Ubuntu or Windows, and we want this many RAM, this many storage. You simply purchase. So it's a data center that you are using logically, but in the behind the scene it is actual physical data centers which service you are utilizing okay but you are using the logical representation that's why it call logical uh, data center okay i hope that uh, solved your question now let's go back let's see other questions so yeah if you still have any problem do feel free to let me know okay i will explain more so i think now i just cover also what i have already explained that covered logical versus the physical logical means that you are in the, in the browser you are what you are operating in the browser physical where in the actual some physical location where people are managing the data center okay data center and when you also you understand it's a building with all the 
is computing resources. Do I need to know programming language for AWS? Also, will DevOps will be AWS DevOps will be covered here? So is Pradeep saying that uh, do I need to run programming language for AWS? I will say it's not mandatory, but if you learn, it will be a lot, a lot better for you. You will get more opportunities. You will have options to become cloud the cloud application developer or cloud application solution architect. Like there are cloud solution architect and there is also cloud application solution architect. So we will develop uh, application and maybe train other people, maybe give uh, have a specialized knowledge in the application development and you can be the team lead, all kind of that, okay? Uh, it's uh, Kovacic saying, oh yeah, AWS DevOps, I don't think it will be covered here, but don't worry if you can go to my YouTube channel and uh, in the, go to the YouTube channel, in the homepage itself, I have already mentioned the my most popular uh, playlist where you can see the DevOps with AWS, follow that series and you'll be coding AWS DevOps, okay? Uh, Kovacic saying that, so in a typical planning, how we decide the cluster, region ability zone to match the customer requirement now that i can i will explain we have the ec2 and all else we have to cover right then i will explain that part that's not a see go see don't be sorry to ask any questions you are asking the right question i'm i'm happy to see that i think now let's get back to the question i think yeah logical center is done now get back to the slides that slide yeah there's a slide okay now let's see okay so now that we have covered what is ability zone and what is region now let's go to the bit more you are here in the edge location i think yeah, location only let's see if i missed any slide or not yeah i think i didn't miss any slide it's the edge location now I think in the beginning of the slide, I think I just told you that a edge location will be uh, greater than the average zone and then average zone. Will, I think you understand now why average zone are more than region because average zone reside inside region and this are the uh, one region should have at least three or more average zone. That's the reason. Okay. Because in the exam, if you sit in the AWS exam, they sometimes ask that question. Okay. That's why I just explained that. Now the part, what is AHC locations? So, just the first example I've said, uh, say you have your server, maybe for a regulatory reason or doesn't matter for any reason, you had to run the server in US, maybe just because your main consumer base in the US, but there is a requirement to say that even the user in any metro cities, they should be able to access the files faster and they their request should not travel to the US to get the response because that will cause a latency or delay. We don't want the delay. We want the server still to be in the, say, uh, in the US. But again, the application user in the Kolkata or Mumbai or Chennai, they should be able to get the files faster to maintain a bad user experience. That is a requirement. Now, in that case, what to do? Here you have the edge location to save you on that part. So, what are the edge location? Edge location having in more, like more popular cities or metro cities, any cloud service provider, especially AWS, have their uh, special data centers, you can say. Uh, so where they have this kind of data distribution services, main focus services, which what actually do, uh, let me actually explain that via a, uh, some draw and all. I think that will be easy to understand. Because this is the kind of, basic session right so let me tell you that so just for example say this is aws okay aws okay aws and uh, the servers are in us okay servers are in us us server us server and your actual user is in kolkata okay in kolkata just for example if user want to access a static file or anything any uh, service uh, that is maybe it's more of a static service cases specifically they have to us right us server but that causing 
latency okay so the request time is getting uh, more okay and that should not be what the way here so aws having a data center or you can say data center you can say a specialized zone or something they have ultimately a building where they store the, the they can store or use the service as a cache so they have a cache say uh, distribution service i would say it will be more appropriate say distribution service in kolkata okay it's a edge location say edge location okay so what will happen the first, they will first the request will go to this if doesn't have the file they will request to the us server from the request to the us server it will come to the kolkata okay then it will go to the user next time the user if the user request then that will go to this uh, kolkata server and uh, it will come to the user the response will come to the user and see in that way there is no more latency it's simply using uh, request sending to kolkata server and the response coming back to the uh, from kolkata server faster the request doesn't have to uh, go away to the us and coming back to uh, the user in kolkata no it's now the uh, going to the kolkata and giving in the response of kolkata and this is how now suppose a new user requesting the exact same file again in the kolkata or maybe in the mumbai region suppose they have uh, mumbai okay they have say chennai so they have this kind of edge locations okay this all edge locations that user suppose in kolkata is going to request to the kolkata it already has a file that's why the response getting faster that how the edge location function okay now next part let me show you guys so i think now let's just just for the sake of definitional view go through so edge location is where use end users access services located at aws the uh, the cloud computing division of is it called amazon they are located in most major cities around the world are specifically used by cloud from so cloud from is the cache service or you can say content distribution service where uh, you make your uh, so, uh, your static files to catch it in all over the uh, world's important location and any user in that particular location will follow the exact flow just i have shown you guys okay so that the the content will get distributed faster image movie uh, could be like streaming services in netflix you want suppose the movie is in us uh, server but you are in india you want or maybe in the mumbai specifically you want to watch the movie from mumbai but if you the server like your uh, app has to interact with the uh, us server it will take time right so instead of that that movie file will get catch in the mumbai region see now the response will be faster that's how it can be more better okay okay now next part i will be, i need i see your question so keep asking the questions i will take a pause after say uh, explaining the basic one say easy to i am or easy to service after I explain then i will explain about the, i mean i will answer the questions okay so aws core services so let's further understand that because aws have more than 200 services let me show you i think i was i'm not logged in so let me log in first uh, while i'm doing logging then let me first uh, list the name the services and what is stuff then we'll go one by one services and explain in a greater depth so first is the aws i am it is used for the your uh see aws iam identity and access management service is used for the let's just whatever overview first then i will come other this will be your in your mind so you know what that we are thinking about the cover first we will cover iam then ec2 ebs bpc rds uh, es3 aws ecs lambda cloud from uh, cloud watch ecs sns and sqs and devops tools now i'm not going to cover all the devops tools but since i already have session on aws in, in my youtube channel you can go watch in my youtube channel it's a very like in cool mind that i prepared for you guys so you can it will be better to watch it in single session it will be tough for you okay now so first service is the aws identity and access management so aws identity and access management enable you to manage and access to the use uh, aws services and resources uh, securely using iam you can create and manage aws users group and use permissions to allow 
uh, and deny their access to the AWS services. I think now it's I can show you guys because the problem is that I'm not logged in. So start with the IAM part. So to log in, you have to like uh, to log in and use any services, you have to go to AWS. So console.aws.amazon.com and it will redirect to the AWS services. See, I don't have uh, access. Right now, I have an IAM user. See, you can allow the user to log as an IAM user. In that case, you have that user have to put the alias or the account ID. I forget my IAM access and all. So I'll use my root account. And uh, you have to first verify. <sighs> I hate it, to be honest. To verify myself, I'm not a robot. And I forget my password. I usually don't remember. So I do make mistake by like intentionally then next time my computer suggests me the proper password i do log in now i have to do multi-factor authentication in that way to make sure that my uh, access is secure even suppose someone get to my uh, password blocked by chance or maybe hacked something somewhere i don't know uh, my account should be clear no matter what so if you are creating on one uh, that aws account make sure to enable the multi-factor authentication that's a must okay let's log in it's done so after logging you will see this screen okay okay so first the IAM service right so search for IAM, see, manage access to AWS services. So right now also I used a login, but uh, I could have used the AM, IAM access instead of my root access. And root access using is uh, kind of bad thing to be honest, but okay, just for demo is fine. I know it's not good, but I have to show you demo guys, right? So yeah, uh, if you log into IAM, uh, that's identity and access management, there you will see these are the options you have. You have a lot of options. Uh, don't have to turn your mind into all that. But important parts here are the user groups, users, roles, and policies. Okay, these four are the most important part in the IAM. Others are important also, but these are the most important. You must learn about that. Okay, that's kind of thing. So here you have users. The very first thing you have to create a user. Say uh, you are a company's uh, account manager, AWS account manager and you have developers, you have system admins. So for each users and system admins, you have to create an IAM account. Uh, you can automate stuff using the Terraform and all, but not beginning. in the beginning, you will not have the knowledge of Terraform, right? So you have to do things manually. Even before, I, I suggest anyone, before jumping into Terraform or automation, uh, then learning about cloud, no. First learn about the cloud, then uh, utilize that in your Terraform. That is the right way to do, it, okay? So that's the reason. Now, let's see. Uh, I, to create a uh, add user, click on add user, and it will redirect to the screen where you can add the details. See username. So let's say I'm giving so any one person from my session itself, Bini, just for example. So uh, username Bini, and uh, what access you want to give? Do you want to give them programming access, or do you want to give them the AWS management access? AWS management access means access to the, this you entire UI where I'm manually adding things and programmatic access means via the code or via the automation like Terraform, Ansible or uh, such kind of SDKs you can or maybe AWS giving us the SDK or the CLI. So say so CLI let me show you what CLI looks like so you will have a good understanding. So I have a CLI looks like this. CLI I have my AWS account configured so I do S3 LS. I can see all the buckets in S3 I have that will get listed here because I have configured the uh, AWS uh, uh, credit that programmatic access in my computer. That's the reason. Similarly, uh, if you want to give them user both the automatic, uh, uh, both the uh, management access as well as the programming access, in that case you have to enable both. Okay. In cases for you know developers or engineers, you do enable both because they require all both credentials time to time. But for the services or maybe the CLI and all, you just need the programming access, not the management access. So before doing, before 
creating the user you have to understand what is the purpose of creating it after you're done with the purpose uh, for which the programming or the management you have to click on next permissions and then you have the uh, option to select group now i have two three groups i can assign to that group because that group already have the access but if you're just creating a new user and there is no group no new groups you may have to think about adding but before adding you can simply this is not mandatory so optional you can add this is a group instead also you can just simply just for example i want to give bini access to the ec2 resources so i can search for ec2 now think about ec2 what access he need does he need the ec2 full access does he just need to watch what other people are doing for that uh, maybe the read only access or maybe other services access or maybe the full access so suppose he need the full access so you have to select the full access plan now you can fine tune that by creating a custom policy here but in most of the cases manage policy is enough but when you're working on big organization or complex application where you have many many developers and engineers in that case the custom policy creation is important and i think in the youtube if you go and look for the policy master class there is one maybe while i send a recording email i will send you guys you can watch that one okay so next is tag to track that like to track the resources tagging uh, is more important uh, suppose uh, suppose you your uh, cdo ask you or your technical manager ask you how many users you have created under this particular finance if you have managed the tags or maybe how many uh, developers you have assigned under the as a developer so if you had like position as developer or department as dev you could have tracked a lot easier way isn't it so this kind of thing that you can always log in and check but the more time you save the more time you get extra to do other, other stuff right? that's the reason and you click on the create user and ta da you have that instance okay okay now it's good so first thing is that we have covered what is the aws uh, user now close it and let me show you so the new user you have created okay i think i forgot to show but that created all the credentials also and you can always come back to that particular user and again suppose you forget the credential or maybe you want to generate new one come in the user screen say i click on bini you can create new security credential you can add say more permissions you can add to group or remove from the group you can add more tags or remove tags so you can do all this kind of stuff even after creating the user as well so you have all that options don't worry on that okay now come to the group suppose the user have created bini i want to uh, let him join under the group of uh, career switch program group just as an just i'm giving example so click create group and i'm adding them and say i'm giving group name career switch training training group uh, train okay and the user you can say bunny bini and the permission i think you already added but you can give them the permission here also select by selecting here just example i want to give him code build access just as example okay and create the group remove the spaces i think at the beginning no okay now go down and create the group and tada you have the career switch training and if you click on the group and under the users you can see the bini now so instead of giving few like uh, the access as a per user you can give access to the group so that you can remove and add any group and you don't have to every time configure that user's permission because you already have added the access to the group that that will be awesome right you don't have to do my manually adding that instead you just add a user and that's it that user has the access to the whatever resources you want to let them that user access and now to the roles now role is important here suppose the services say aws ec2 you have instance or any machine or maybe your local uh, not local say instance want to access a file in the s3 now from that s3 instance you can file access the file s3 if you have configured the aws cli but 
AWS CLI, CLI need access, right? Ultimately, it's just the CLI until unless you give that CLI access. That CLI get access by two ways. Either you configure the AWS credential by running the AWS command, or you can give that particular EC2 uh, instance a role, a create a role here. So create a role. This is the example I'm showing, guys. So creating, say, role for a EC2, you are creating a role. Say next permission that EC2 uh, role has access to say S3, just the example. S3, so full access. Next tags, next review. Say EC2 user, no, EC2 machine, uh, EC2 machine S3 access. Okay. That means if I assign this role to AC2 instance, that EC2 instance can connect to, uh, can make interaction with the S3 services, and as a user, we can access the S3 files from the EC2 machine itself without adding the uh, the credentials manually. There is a thing called STS. Okay, that STS service is behind the scene of this uh, facility. Maybe in later videos when I go in depth more about this kind of services, I will explain. But for now, just understand there is a STS service which allows us to do that. Okay, now policies is where you can find in the access level. So you want to give one machine's particular instance access to a user, not all the access of all these two, or a particular uh, that any particular user you want to give only S3 access, one particular uh, kind of bucket in that kind of find and access you can do via the create policy. If you click on create policy, you have the UI to select the resources and generate that you can from the editor. Or if you are good, if you have a one year, two year, three experience, you can uh, write a JSON statements. Okay, so if you already you can see, suppose you want uh, say S3, so select S3 service, then in S3 service itself, uh, you want, if you want to select it, what kind of uh, access level list to it, right? Say you want to give them the list and read access, then what is the resources? You can see uh, resources specific, then uh, add ARN for the particular resource or you can say all resources and it will all actually I think in You can see it accordingly creating the JSON statements. So you can do that. Okay So that is the aim. Uh, let me know if anyone have any questions related to aim uh, I am and The point you should focus the basic components not about the basic components of the I am I've shown you users I've shown you groups I've shown you permissions Multi-factor authentication I have not shown, but uh, let me show you because I'm showing you guys anyway. Let me show you the multi-factor authentication. So suppose uh, for you can go to your in this skin in under my security credential. You can see multi-factor authentication. I have already added mine. If you don't add any, you can go ahead and manage and add it for you. Okay, that's how you do it. Okay, now coming to the next points. Now you should not, don't use a root. I personally say don't use a root, but it's still I'm using the demo. But demo fine in real life, don't use it. It's risky. Uh, use the roles as much as possible because in that case, you don't have to create the credential. If you don't create the credential, you don't have a headache to managing the credential. That's the best part. The use temporary credential in STS. I told you learn about the STS cross account region role, account federation, web based federation, enterprise entity federation, learn about all that. Uh, if you just learn the uh, YouTube or any good course in Udemy, you'll find for cheaper courses. YouTube is completely free. You can learn all that. Okay. Uh, utilize I am credentials. Utilize access keys, password for CLI and API access. I am users. Okay. Uh, as you need, you uh, do the access, uh, create the credentials. Otherwise, remove the credential or don't even create the credential if you don't need it. So let's see if anyone have any questions regarding the I am. Okay. So it's. Uh, Uh, see, I'm saying how some language which removes is there any certification required? Uh, so, in typical planning, how look that's I think I, will, I said I will cover while covering EC2. The thing is here, uh, edge location is also kind of data center. Is it physical data center or logical? See, edge location also kind of data center, but it's of course a physical data center. The how otherwise it will work. But as a user, what we are able to access are the logical model via the web browser. So to us, it's a logical representation 
of the actual physical server that's located in the particular city or metro city area okay that's the difference um it's saying why is in subam why is it to uh why is it to i don't know uh, can you subam explain more about about what um thing you want to what context you want to give the answer i will be happy to help that the so kozik saying that what is the difference um between uh, adding users permission and uh, other hand assigned permission policy by the role so see users are the most of the cases actual real life users like you me the our developer team those are the actual users for those cases they need the actual credential the API, the the access key and access secret or maybe the login access is an name password and the account alias so that they can log in in the web browser but for the machines is it to user is it to Uh, instances or maybe the other services they don't need the login access they cannot they don't want to log in they want to get some api level access that is access keys and secret so that they can access the services that's the reason we have the roles in the place and our policy part is that uh, you want to like most of the cases manage policies or aws gives us there is more of a more like open access kind of thing it's not open up say is up to you anyway uh, but it's more of a generalized way but the access you want to give to your uh, users that is has to be a fine grain level uh, not less not more it has to be at par what the user actually need you should create a customized policy and assign that to that particular users in that way that user will not have access to other services that is not supposed to do what happens you know uh, let me tell you one very example our company griffin um given the kind of bit more advanced access to a user i was again against of it but they say they need it and that user actually minded minded bitcoins if they had listened to me uh we didn't had we didn't pay one i think some lakhs of bill but if they had listened to me that this situation uh, this situation would have even never occurred right so that is the reason whatever user access actually need give them not more than that they are tend to misuse that's the reason okay um kosik said how do you force you to have a uh, uh, mfa during the user creation you cannot if you have the access you cannot uh, create but you can do that by the organization level so in the organization uh, there is a service called aws organization let me show you if i can show now let's close this otherwise it will make the heavy okay so there is a thing called organization Oh, there is one thing called config. So, config. See this uh, config service. Using the config service, you can mandate that the user uh, has to have whatever you want ultimately. But just for example, that user must have a MFA that you can do. Uh, that is ultimately via some lambda functions. Uh, okay, close this one. Uh, via lambda function, you can do it. You can see this shows how many resources I'm running. Uh, in my account right and you can create the rules custom rules for that and if suppose someone breaks the rule you can generate some kind of event notification emails whatever the hell you want to be honest and uh, you want that to be reverted back via lambda function you can revert back to that okay so you can do that okay that's the answer uh, aws config one other example is the organization so or organization aws organization where you can create service policies okay and if you use the service level policies uh, then you uh, so suppose say, i have one aws account only i can add and add more users here and that i can add the uh, policies okay uh, where i can enforce that to be uh, i can get custom policies i think so i uh, forgot i did it or not but using aws config i did similar kind of thing that happened otherwise i think that is possible via this uh, organization policy okay but i'm not 100% sure i have not tried that i tried via the config and via the lambda function once there was a regulatory requirement i had to do it i actually did it via the uh, tera form to be honest not by okay <laughs> okay anyway uh, let's get back to our session okay so now i am i am part is done i see again any questions uh not much so yeah any question you can simply go ahead and ask
Okay, one question is that uh, Rohan saying that for add custom policy for that using JSON format or else uh, in another way you can please explain briefly. So there is a one, one uh, UI uh, I was showing you guys one UI where you can add that uh, policy one by one the access level or another tab was for JSON. So you can either generate the policy by the policy UI uh, policy generation UI. Or if you are that much experienced like me, if you are an experienced person, I know what the, in my mind actually everything is mapped. So I know exactly what is the parameter and name and what should the value to add that particular access that we have used to it. But if you are not used to it, you can use the UI of the adding manually part. Okay. That is there. Now let's come back and move to the next part. Next is easy to. So what is easy to? It's Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud is a web service that provides secure, resizable compute capacity in the cloud. It is designed to make web scale cloud computing easier for the developers. And Amazon EC2 is simple web service interface allow you to obtain and configure capacity with minimal fraction. It provides you with complete control of your computing resources and let you run on Amazon proven computing environment. <sighs> what the hell? So it's a kind of complex thing to learn, but in simple language, it's just simply you can uh, think about like kind of you and given you have given a choice, okay? Create as you like, and you have given so small parts, say RAM, say storage, okay, stay net firewall. Like you can call it security group anyway. Say which region you want to run in this, okay? You what happened? <laughs> and you have to okay. And you have to take say how much RAM you need, okay? That here, how much storage you want, storage, how much like uh, what firewall or security group want. That config here and that particular resource where you want to run in the world in the world say in the Mumbai uh, China whatever you want to run you can run it so this service where you can decide where what resources you want and where you can run is what is it to give you nothing else nothing complicated it's kind of giving you option like you go and purchase a machine for you with graphics with you know processor power I think I forget the processing. Most important thing I forget. Oh my God. Okay, so how many virtual CPU? Okay, say two CPU kind of thing. So that is, you can do via this uh, EC2 service. So it's EC2 service. So EC2 service giving you all that you have to assemble. I will show you anyway, so don't worry. And uh, you can then choose it, what to do with that. So let me show. Let me show you guys how it looks like. So this is the one, I guess. Again, to have the EC2 service, you have to go to EC2. See, and this is the EC2 UI. Let it load. Fine. See, so this is the EC2 UI then you have to launch an instance so that you can access the instances click on the launch instance and just i've shown you in the diagram few slide few second back you have the option to select the os first i think if i forgot to tell about the os but yeah you have to select the os first so and uh, you have a lot of options so you have amazon linux tmi that is manage instance by aws much more secure than what you what you have managed it's much more um, Secure because big engineer minds are in, uh, behind development and maintaining this image, so it saves you a lot of time and the security concern more or less. You have the Mac OS, you have the Red Hat Enterprise, you have the uh, Social Linux, the Ubuntu. I, my personal favorite, Ubuntu is there. Um, you have Debian, you have Windows, you have a lot of, like any anything you can imagine. Most of the 99% cases that OS you will be able to get in the AWS AMI list. Just for our sake of our example today, we are going with the 
is that uh, ubuntu okay now the choosing part it's asking you about select the memory the cpu memory and uh, the like how you want it and see you have to you have a given option to select family so the based on the different different families now what are the family let me show you guys so ec2 instance if you just search in google instance types you can see here ec2 instance type and different different instance are required for different different occasions for general purpose you have tc t2 all the m, m series for the compute optimized where you have you need the computing power as much as possible okay uh, for that you have a c level this compute optimized for memory suppose you are going to host a database high throughput application where the reads and writes are havoc in that case you have to think about memory memory optimized okay uh, so see storing part memory optimized accelerated computing for suppose the machine learning or the artificial intelligence data modeling and all processing there you need the accelerated computing and my god this is very costly so before uh, creating or going for that think about the cost part now how to uh, think about the cost go to aws uh, cost calculator and see pricing calculator and suppose just maybe in the dream if you want to have a p level instance Uh, come here click on create estimate and search for the ec2 service configure and just for the sake of example i'm telling you guys to go for let's go to the advanced in basic you don't have much options to be honest yeah now i can select what i want so basic instance type uh, say you want that p level okay P, say P six, P four. Just for example, P four, and see, do you have one P four X? The thing and the cost is you can go down fourteen thousand seven hundred thirty seven, and you don't want it. What you actually want is maybe run a small demo server, which gonna cost you I think say T um, two or T three. Just for example, a T two T three nano. Just for example, I'm saying. You need for example and testing. You need this eleven dollar. <laughs> so before going to create any instance, you have to make sure that you understand the more bigger instance you go for, the more you have to pay, and the small instance you go for, the less you have to pay. Like paisa do, the more you get. The more sweet you add, the more sweet it gets. I think so. Kind of that was example anyway. Uh, so that's how it is, and. Uh, So yeah, learn about the instance, what they do, what is storage optimized for the. Uh, if you are thinking about the examination purpose point of view, knowing EC2 type is good. Uh, maybe come in the exam for professional level examination, it will definitely come. I have seen this kind of questions where they said, what kind of given scenario, what kind of instance should be the you have you have you should select that kind of example. So definitely uh, learn about that if you are going for the higher level or actual learning. I think it's good to know about what what kind of instance goes. Suppose uh, you are creating on infra for your client, and if you don't know what kind of uh, the base or you can say the base of the building, how other things will build based on the building, right? So that which you might be strong if there is the budget. Based on the budget, you make house and building. You cannot make a um, building with uh, one leg, right? You need colors, but for the small. Hard and all, it can be done in the uh, online. So that is the uh, main point here. Okay. So I think <laughs> I was in the process of showing you guys how to create the EC2 instance. <laughs> so okay. So for for example, you need T3 uh, nano or micro should be more than enough. Okay. So just for example, select that, and then click on the review and maybe con configure the instance. Other details. It's a much more complicated. That's why there is a next button. It was not the default option. So you can see number of instances, how many instances you create. Do you want a spot instance or not? Networking part. Now, if you are not sure about what is networking, in my YouTube channel you can go and you can see in the home page itself. I have explained about what is the basic uh, computer networking. Learn that. Then you can. I have uh, next line of uh, videos already ready for this VPC. Maybe if if I'm not too tired, I have one more session. this if i'm not too tired 
I will uh, release the BBC one. If I'm tired, I will not release one. Sorry. Anyway, so subnet you can select what is, and uh, I will in, in upcoming uh, session I can I even explaining what is the subnets and all, how to assign the uh, subnet, how can divide the subnet and all. Everything I have covered. So yeah, a subnet to choose what uh, uh, should you have the automatic public IP or not. That example placement group also. So placement placement group of like you want a cluster of machine should be one uh, location uh, so that the communication be faster, the data sharing to be faster. If you have that kind of requirement, go through. But mind that it could be costly. So we are domain joint directory. I am role. Suppose it, you want that particular instance to have some access to S3. So that we have created one role. And uh, that we'll see should be here. So EC2, EC2 machine, or see S3 access. S3, remember, we have created EC2 machine S3 access that you can attach it here so that this machine you can access the AWS services if you configure the CLI or suppose you have library to access the S3 service, you should be able to access it because the machine has access. If you want to enable the detailed one uh, second level monitoring, you can enable this in a, uh, option. So you can you have you should go ahead and click on this I button, and it will explain you what it exactly do, and you should do that when if you're learning in the learning phase. Then click on review and launch, and you can see now by default the security groups are the primary defense, uh, not primary defense to be honest, but for you if you don't know about all other options, for to you it's your primary defense. So you, you can make sure that that machine's um, uh, SSH access, so SSH is a protocol where you can communicate over the secure cell like this to the particular instance, okay? So there's a reason uh, you can config, even configure more detailed way. Think got that, so it's security group, this option, you can click and uh, you can say instead of 0.0.0, .0, .0 I will be any way explaining that video i will share the link with you guys also where i have very simply have simplified this ip submitting cid blocks and everything it will be good for you guys i will share as soon as i release it now understand that you can do all that uh, now this part when you make it 0.0.0.0 it means it's accessible to anywhere in the world now you want to make and that's a attack layer so anyone can attack from any other world in this particular instance just to access the ssh you want to make sure that doesn't happen just make it your public or private ip sorry not private ip <laughs> make it your public ip and that is your reduce the attack area surface to your ip now in case that ip if you have a dynamic ip it changed to someone else it's very unlikely that person will do the attack anyway <laughs> so yeah anyway so now you can review and launch you can select that and all click on launch you can have the option to create the uh, what key pair i already have one but suppose you don't have any Select the new key pair and give any other name. Download it, otherwise it will get lost. Download it and then you can utilize it. For me, I already had an existing key pair, I can go with that. So I click on the create instance. It will create the instance and I can do after the instance actually gets started. I can do SSH into the particular instance and whatever I want to, I say I want to host application or I want to do whatever I want, I can do that. Okay, so that is there. Now, if anyone have any questions regarding the EC2, they can ask. I'll be happy to answer. Let's see. Uh, how do you force it? That is there now. One question, I see. Sir, can you, Rohan Singh, sir, can you tell me about Elastic IP? What it is? Good question. Mm, I think I was forgetting about to explain all that. So, let me explain that. So, you have, suppose it's easy to, okay? And as soon as the, uh, we have launched the instance, isn't it? And see, it created one IP. Now, this is the dynamic IP. The moment you restart, not reboot, only restart. So, if you, okay, if you stop the instance and start it again, it's a restart. And in that, you, when the moment you stop it, it releasing the IP from your instance and it's available to any user in the world automatically assigned to them. And suppose by mistake, or by not mistake, but suppose you had pointed a domain to this particular IP and you had to stop the instance and then IP got changed. So your server and your domain is not reachable anymore. You have to again go and update your DNS, which also takes some seconds to minutes, two hours to days based on the config you have set. Oh my God, that's a very problem, right? To solve that, 
we had a static IP. And in static IP, it doesn't change until unless you release the IP to other people. It's your, you have the full control over that particular IP static or here we are calling it elastic IP. So elastic IP is equal to more or less the static IP which never change until you release that IP. So go down, way down and you will see the under networking and security you will see the elastic IPs. And that is elastic IP. You can see I had two elastic IP. Uh, I can create one elastic IP. Say and uh, amazon pull up ipv4 addresses uh you i think you can have the six i think maybe it's not supported here but maybe we'll soon have it so the moment you click on allocate it create a static ip for you see it created the static ip for me and you can name it say demo ip demos uh, elastic ip and this ip is fixed no matter, suppose, okay, just give an example. If I go to instances tab, you know, and uh, now note that instance has an IP. Just reload. I think this is the one, this initialization one, that is the one. And let me delete this one. And say, yeah, good example. So if you want to terminate the instance, go here and uh, uh, then go to the instance settings. You can see the option change term not do that uh, i think there should be option here so yeah terminate the instance so click on the terminate instance and uh, if you do click on terminate it will get terminated it will stop okay and see this is the one you have created and see this is the ip now look at very carefully this is the ip 18 dot at the end we have 31 just remember that at the end we have 31 the way I shortcut, I just in the browser I pasted it. Okay, so we had an IP. The moment I'm stopping his instance, just wait a moment. So wait for this to be stopped. See. You don't have a IP anymore because that IP got released. And if you start the instance, it will look at what are the available IP addresses in the Amazon pool of IP addresses. As Amazon have reserved, um, I think millions and millions of IP addresses they have reserved for them. So that as a user, you don't face a problem related to the getting IP address. And see this time, it's a new address. Wow. Suppose you had your domain pointed to this particular IP, and the moment you restarted the server, that is gone for any issue you have to maintain cause any reason or maybe service communication in that case only you just uh, come to the elastic IP and you say there is an option called uh, associate elastic IP address and it will come to a screen where you can select the instance see this one is running running the moment you do allocate the IP see in this this IP will change to that IP, this 33. So let's just do refresh and you'll see. See, it changed and the previous IP is uh, again released. And now onwards, if you stop it and then again, uh, you start the instance. Oh, this is all in the stop mode. So yeah, uh, if you start after that, and maybe the, after even if it stop, its uh, its IP will never change. Okay, its IP will stay the same. Same. Okay, even if it stopped, this IP will not change anymore. That is a static or elastic IP. I hope I have explained that clearly. And uh, let me see if anyone have any questions so I can answer. You know where Ansible goes. Okay, there's a lot of questions. Mm. Messages, no, do you not my messages? So I will go to the next slide. Okay, elastic block storage. So I have explained in EC2 that uh, you know you create instance or machine, virtual machine, to be honest, and you do all a lot of stuff now. 
worried about the storage because it's a OS or running right and OS need to be installed somewhere, isn't it? And that somewhere is the EBS here. And that EBS is like elastic block storage, is the volatile storage part. Uh, so like you are using the storage, once this is done, you can delete it. If you want, you can keep it as well. But in normal cases, uh, it's like as soon as you, if you don't enable a particular option, as soon as you stop or delete the instance, that attached elastic block storage also get destroyed, okay? So here, uh, elastic green stock, easy to use, high performance block storage, service designed to for uh, use of AWS elastic computer class is EC2. Uh, for both throughput and uh, transaction intensive workloads at any scale, a broad range of workloads such as relational, non relational databases, enterprise application, containerized application, big data analytics, file system, media workloads are widely deployed in EBS, and that is true. That happens. So, and uh, point to focus here the EBS types, uh, then uh, so EBS types are what? G, that SSD type, SSD like the modern one. See, I have this. I don't know if I can show you guys. This small baby, small, this is SSD, okay? Previously, you used to have one, like, big uh, kind of, like, this big for uh, 250 GB. And now, see this small baby, okay? This is Samsung one. This is one terabyte. This small. So this is, uh, so just let me give you an example. So SSD are smaller, better, and a lot better. The speed of the read and write is faster. So yeah, again, based on the SSD, types are different, right? So GP, GP3, IO, IO2, IO2, Blog Express, um, and uh, Express, okay, and the performance cost is higher. G category is the general purpose. I category is the highest performance. The more you guide, uh, go to the I level, the more, performance you get and the more you have to pay for the G level uh, it's a okay okay service or maybe for normal applications fine but if it's a database service you know or bigger like very uh, write or read read write in this application having good performance matters and those cases you have to you should go for the I level if you the budget support otherwise there's the point okay if you don't have the budget how can you do all that so yeah and HDD are the normal hard disks like the old computer used to had 2 terabyte, 3 terabyte, 4 terabyte, just for the log processing or maybe other things, smaller cases, you should have uh, used the hard disk in EC2, okay? Terminations, remember in the beginning while started, I said, by default termination product is turned off, so you delete the EC2 instance, also the data get removed. If you want to, don't want to happen, you have to disable that. Uh, production, uh, okay, that is there. Uh, resize, you can easily resize the volume, simply go to, I'll show anyway how to do it. Encrypt, you can it support the encryption, you can encrypt via the KMS or the AWS managed uh, encryption. Snapshot, you can create the backups. Suppose you want uh, you want to delete the volume, but you want to keep the data. So in future, if you need it, you can create a copy of that data in the volume and then you can uh, utilize that. That you can do via the snapshot, okay? So again, a backup scheme. Now enough talk, like talk is okay, but now the show time. So, let me show you guys what this look like. So I think this uh, service stop now let's start it and see stop but the IPS doesn't change okay that is the thing I had to show and uh, the volume part so if you go to the storage of that particular instance you will see it an attached root volume the root device type is attached to the EBS or elastic block storage we just discussed what elastic block storage is the storage part of EC2 instances, uh, kind of disk, uh, like they shown you this kind of small or bigger disk. I don't know what exactly AWS have, but should be like similar kind of thing. And uh, this is the volume ID. Click on that and see elastic block storage in the very left of the EC2. You have elastic blocks of volumes. There you can see this volume is 8 GB volume. So it is 8 GB storage. We have the OS and you can run. Now, some most of the cases, uh, if you run a production, non-dev application or a general purpose application 8 gb is nowhere enough you have to have at least 30 40 or 20 gb of things okay this days i'm talking about and uh, suppose 8 gb is not uh, enough you can go here and uh, you can see modify the volume and you can say i need 30 gb just for example 30 and the more the storage you add the iops which is the input of operations 
um, that performance also get better. Remember that the more spaces you have, the more performance you get. Of course, the more cost is get added and you can go anytime to the this uh, cost calculation screen and calculate the cost of the data uh, or the storage, then only go for it. Okay, otherwise not. Okay, I guess uh, I hope you guys understand the volume part. Now, while creating the volume itself, you have the choice like you want GP2, you want GP3, you want IO1, you want IO2. The more better uh, the option you choose, the more bigger amount you have to pay. So, understand that but very carefully. You select the ability zone. Uh, most of the cases, uh, you should keep the ability zone same, otherwise, you see the option even not working somewhere. So that is there. If you want to encrypt, you have the option to encrypt. As I said uh, in the talk, you can do that. Okay. So any questions uh, uh, regarding this, you can ask me now. We have one minute. I want to cover the basic services first. So not this detail I can explain all that, but I want to explain whatever I can do in the details. If it's not much time left, I will go like very fast speed. Okay, so Kozik saying, uh, Kozik saying, can we uh, use the NAT or it always a public IP? Yeah, you use NAT. Suppose you have, uh, see, NAT only used in case you have private IP that particular instance doesn't have access to outside world. Then you add a NAT to have that outside level access or access to the internet. Still, there will be no input access directly to the uh, uh, instances of traffic because it's uh, more of a not connected to the internet. Just suppose you want that particular instance of service want to access outside APIs, outside and you know, to download the things, update the package list. In those cases, you need the access, right? But it's not it's pub, private IP, it's public uh, private instance, private subnet. It cannot access the outside. Node. In that case, you add the net in the same uh, ability zone. Um, so that you can have the you can that particular instance can access the outside internet. Okay, that is the entire reason. Uh, it's uh, so EBS is mapped against EC2 instance services. Yes, that's what it is. Just okay. Uh, Anurag saying hello, Sandeep. By doing hands-on, can I move to uh, take role AWS? Of course. I mean, uh, uh, see support role or not. Uh, take role or not any role it requires the good hands-on knowledge but you will get more chance for more technical uh, say architect or associate architect uh, or maybe the system design level that cases you or maybe the devops if you want move you need more hands-on then only you can move to the big tech roles okay that is there now any questions i think no questions anymore and yeah i think you can anyway ask the question while you go forward i think it's, the session is going really well and I see a lot of questions coming on and all. It's good. So yeah, keep the questions coming if you have because the the you the thing you're learning in the session. I think if you just by learning the session, you will be able to uh, do a lot of stuff because you have to explore the option I'm showing you guys and the document I will be sending to anywhere and you can explore more on the points. I have said focus, focus on this point specifically. Okay. Now the next point. <sighs> okay the amazon virtual private cloud or vpc this is you can say the networking is one of the key or core element of any cloud or a normal uh, uh, normal uh, localized data center anywhere on premise or in the cloud the networking part is most important thing one of the most important not the simplest mode, but one of the very most important thing is the vpc or uh, the networking part so the vpc here is what allowing or managing the entire networking uh, services for AWS, but for that particular user, okay? Uh, because it's kind of uh, kind of isolated block or isolated space is given to particular user. Now the up to user, what user you want to do with the VPC or that particular networking services. So let's go with the definition way. So Amazon Virtual Private Cloud or VPC is a service that let you launch the AWS service in a logic, uh, logically isolated virtual network that you define. Like as I said, you are the one is defining creating that. So you have complete control over your virtual networking environments, including the selection of your IP addresses, uh, address range, creation of subnets, and all this 
I'm covering in my upcoming session. So I'll not go to in that depth. So you guys not going to see that. Uh, but in the next session, I'll be mailing you guys the link. So in that, I have covered a BBC, particularly subnet and IPQ address range and all that. The the complex part. So simplified way, you're gonna you guys gonna love that. So I'll release that. Maybe I'm feeling tired. I think just by this session, uh, I have another session. So maybe not that. But tomorrow when I release, I'll uh, share the link with you guys. Okay. So yeah, subnet configuration of route tables, network gateways. You can use both IPv4 and IPv6 for the most of the resources in your virtual private cloud, helping you to ensure and uh, secure the easy and resources applications. So that easy to instance you have launched. I don't know if you find. Uh, yeah, I think I was showing you that you can select the IP, you can select the subnets. So you need the VPC to have VPC to have the subnets and all, so that you can create the instance in a particular uh, graphical location. Okay, you do that graphical selection, the region selection, uh, not the region selection, the VPC selection and the ability selection that you mention in actually which part of the world in which subnet you are going to use that virtualization. This virtualized instance because this is virtualized. You don't know actually where this application is. Your your OS is or your uh, instance is running, but it's it's running to that particular logically isolated location that you are mentioning. So somewhere in the US uh, East A, it's uh, or, or West One uh, B or A B, not One A or One B. This kind of the naming uh, convention in AWS. So there is running. You know that part, okay? That you define via the VPC. So very important part here. Now, what are the points you should focus in the BBC? You focus on under understand very well this concept: CIDI block, subnet mapping, internet gateway, NAT gateway, NAT instances, virtual uh, private gateway, customer gateway, router, VPC endpoint, ingress only internet gateway, security group, network, ACL. I'm telling like one by one. I'm, it's not kind of easy thing, but I'm giving the topics where you should uh, scroll more understand. Anyway, I'm making videos, a series of videos. Uh, subnet, then the net, and then the private. I will be covering all that advanced topic. I've already decided. You can learn on that part in advance. But in the YouTube already many resources already available. You can check that one also. So in the pricing, always remember to check the pricing estimate before selecting the VPC. You have that price calculator. Go and check there. Uh, understand the ENI. Understand what is ENI. How to utilize this. Basically, it gives you a unique MAC address. So where are uh, the support software licensing? In that case, they might need you to give a MAC address so that they can enable the software license for the particular uh, particular MAC address. In those cases, you have to understand the ENI parts. Now, in tenancy options, suppose you want to uh, you know uh, create a resource in a shared, so anyone can come and play shared with where you are sharing your resources with other people. You are still dedicated to you, but it's a shared uh, environment or dedicated. Suppose it's a machine. It's a virtualized machine. Uh, you getting a virtual space. Other people get. I think I should explain that one. This is very important. You know, people get confused this virtualization part. So I want to explain you guys this part. So why I'm talking about the uh, tenancy option? So tenancy. Understand the tenancy very well. So say this is a instance. Okay, this is a or machine. This is a machine. And suppose that machine have virtualization. Okay, you are getting that part. You are getting okay that space, and some other people. Okay, other people are getting this space. It's a shared. It's cost effective because it's a shared. And suppose again another block. This particular. You are blocking for you, okay? It's costly, but dedicated to you. It's a virtualized, but still, it's only reserved for you. So that is what. So why need for the regulatory purposes where you cannot uh, share your spaces with anyone on the hardware level? Then you can go for this kind of uh, hardware specific use case where you must uh, like reserve that particular like dedicatedly used as tenant. That particular space for you, dedicated resource. If it's a shared, then it's a less like less cost, cost effective. But you're sharing the resources. You don't know it, but it's happening in the behind the scenes. That's why it's very important. Okay. Now let's see one question. Any recording for first week? Uh, also, is it only on Sunday? 
today's now it's the second week uh, session uh, and uh, first week i have already mailed look now man look go your email uh, search for the career switch training if you search in the google i mean it's whatever your email service provider is there you will definitely find out the my mail okay and make sure and add this email address okay contact at the rate of sandeep or oh, no it's your friend uh your friend if uh, you at the rate of sandeep das dot in to your email addresses you know in the message i have mentioned so that my email will must get if you want to make sure my email that doesn't get missed add that email id i have shared in the uh, messages so that you don't miss it okay now no much question i see okay here one anurag have asked a question how is sandeep by doing hands on okay that's in alphabet uh, it's uh, is it uh, first session that is there uh, any recording first week okay that is but no more question i see here sir can you tell me about the rest here that is clear custom policy is there okay most of thing i have covered now let's go to the next and uh, i have to now I, i'll speed it up okay now i'll make it a speed up because it's already how many 1 hour 31 minutes so i will uh, wrap up the rest of the thing within 30 minutes so i know i'll go a little fast but this is to cover everything in time okay so now is the rds rds or relational database system so i don't know if you heard or not you, there are databases where like mysql uh, oracle you have uh, i think postgresql uh, microsoft sql server maria db you can see support ability support uh, mysql maria postgre oracle and otherwise uh, aws own stuff um, they have developed by their own uh, so this rds support all the services now it use for setup operate and uh, scale at relational uh, uh, database in the cloud with just a few clicks so amazon relational database service or rds make it easy to set up operate and scale relational database in the cloud it provide cost effective and resizable capacity while automating time focusing administrative tasks such as hardware provisioning database setup patching backup it frees up to say, uh, focus your application so you can give uh, them the high performance high availability security compatibility they need enough of the definition it ultimately saying see installation part uh, managing the patches uh, managing the parameters you don't have to do anything that we as aws will deal with you just create say that what how much 2 gb 5 gb 10 gb 1 gb whatever space you require just reserve that what should be the uh, ram so the more ram means the faster operation the faster response and request then the more cpu again the more processing it will can do so you select how much speed how much processing and how much memory you want and yes we will manage that for you and you have to pay me pay us some sort of amount on a monthly basis pay as you go that's what aws ideas do now there are some points you need to focus i have already mentioned all the points in the like ideas auto scale uh, storage auto scaling um like uh, what should be like instance size how to select the size and all uh, fault tolerance reliability should be uh, maintained via the multi az that i think enough of the talk let me show you guys how it looks like so you will have a generic idea kind of thing so how to find a service go to the here and look for the rds service in the top and you'll find that rds give me some time to load i know my internet speed is now 1 gbps still it slowing uh, taking some time to load is actually not because of the internet slow it's because the resource consumption because i'm running multiple softwares and all that's the reason okay is loaded now so to create a instance you have to come down here and uh, create database click on that and then you have a option to select which database you want to select see you have aurora you have mysql mariadb was do you oracle mysql server whatever you want to let's say example mysql then you have the option like you want to create a production you want to use for the dev and you want to go for the free trial free trial is the trial where Uh, if you are eligible for the free trial, you don't have to pay with cost. But the resources in this category is D2 Micro, smaller instance, low cost. If you select the dev, it may I think go for the M level, or uh, yeah, MC M6G. 
it will give you 2 cpu 8 gb you can always go and change whatever your actual requirement are you can select that from here and the more bigger you select the more bigger the bill gets the two thousand dollar and uh, the smaller instance you select let's see yes let's go for the very small instance say t i don't know t will come or not it's a smaller one two cpu and uh, you can see the bill getting decreased to one doing sense so more resource more cost less resource cost after you're done setting the password authentication and all and all that if you can configure the password setting and everything whatever you normally select on the database you can select all that and after you're done you can create a database it will create a database you can connect your application in that database that's what it does nothing else i'm saying is nothing else is complicated when you make complication application development but as the basic application flow you create a database and connect give the credential to the application and it connect and operate the database you don't have to install the data, uh, mysql in your machine you don't have to manage the patching you don't have to manage the scaling because suppose some right now you have 100 gb requirement after three months four months you required one terabyte requirement in local computer it's a very tough task purchasing and if you don't even need it why paying that much but if it's in the cloud the moment you need it use it the moment you don't need it delete it that's the luxury you have okay now next service the next service is a very interesting one amazon simple storage service so what amazon simple storage service does amazon simple storage is a object storage service that offer industry leading uh, scalability scalability uh, data availability security high performance okay uh, this means customer of all size industries can use it store and uh, is it stored and protect any amount of data range we use cases such as data lakes website mobile application backup restore achieve enterprise application iot device data big data analytics amazon s3 provide easy to manage manage features so you can manage all that like uploading the file deleting the file manage the file sharing the access to the people you can manage all that by the aws s3 console and you have to create a bucket and the most importantly it gives you 99.9999999 nines of durability of the storage data for minimal application company all around the world so it giving you that level of confidence your data will never get lost like never 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 maybe a bit tiny one option a night chance not option chance but that's most unlikely to happen okay but that happens okay that happens but very unlikely it's kind of you know two three year you might see once not even once but something happens some outage happens and then if that happens you see a lot of website going down a lot of problem happening it happens so understand general uh, the s3 standard uh, for general purpose storage for frequently accessed data s3 standard one way one way that uh, uh, that is ia that is uh, infrequent access uh, for uh, long live but less frequently access so infrequent access mean less utilized right so that is less frequently access data is stored the object data identity uh, across multiple geography separated by exit okay so it better but less better than the standard one think about that then you have s3 one but it's cheap cheaper than the standard uh, standard storage now you have the s3 one zone iowa so now it's stored that you have the stored data but only in one ability zone these are the data which are okay to get lost if it get lost you don't mind up lose anything much not that kind of important but you have to pay less cost for that that's why but uh, so that's why it's uh, cheaper then you have is uh, the intelligent tiring so is the intelligent tiring is that uh, data will come if the data is frequently accessed the infrequent when you are saying that is a intelligent tiring it will keep it as a standard the moment it uh, like not that frequently accessed it will move to the infrequent in access the moment uh, you uh, it, this is no more required it will move to, if you set the rule uh, life cycle properly it will move to the say in fact uh, to the glacier now glacier is used for the long time archive okay i think enough talk let me just show you guys uh, in the screen so what is s3 look like so look for the service s3 in the service searching then uh, go to the s3 now the moment if you ever in your life want to think how many service aws uh, you give to us i don't know in the last session i've shown you not i think most people have shown it anyway you can click on these services and you can see list of the big service 
there are the services aws gives so nobody in the world can perfect or master all the services but uh, learn and expertise on the services that you are using regular basis that actually you need in the project those are the things you must uh, expertise right? okay specifically mostly the aws uh, ec2 s3 the storage and the security these are the most thing now if you want to become a devops engineer then you have to learn about the devops like uh, code pipeline code bit to code commit and these are the things okay so here you can see i have a lot of buckets so you can create a bucket so to store the data in aws s3 you have to create a bucket but that bucket has to be a domain domain compiler name so say i space something space that and if you try to create it no you cannot because domain doesn't have a spaces now this then suppose some special characters no you cannot adopt because domain doesn't serve the special character except this one this is allowed okay okay so but yeah we'll not do that we right? just simply say sample uh, sandeep special demo i hope this no one have it's a global okay so any people can have this kind of name uh, any name anyone have it so that's why but there is of course a limit there are a lot of option mainly the security part so if you want to make sure the block for everyone it's a secure thing you have to block for everyone so then let's look for that and say this one and you can upload a file say see come to this screen and say add file and we can simply say i have created so uh, to the today itself i'm going to teach the freshers about devops for that i have created one image and so i'm uploading that here see it uploaded but it had a permission section and all so once it get uploaded let me show you guys this is the name of the that we need to be loaded first close it yeah you can see all the info here also or you can check the, the this is the file details that you uploaded but if you want to access the file directly it will not work i think it will give error because this is don't don't have access access denied it that's why and you can uh, say make it permission change so make public just for example and it making is public then if i go to this oh, it's not okay yeah we have one setting here block is block public access that's why it's not available to public if you want to have the public access which is not right thing to be honest but if it's okay of course if it's okay that's fine if you want to have a like a hosted uh, side hosted in the s3 in that case you might want to do it confirm it and save it in that case if i go here i think no nah, i have to go and uh, make that object section and again make it public public then it will become public okay now it become public now if i go here what happened they deleted it okay not a problem let's go back see because i made it public so permission level changes i have i can see it now so that's how is three functions i have given overview but it's a lot more than it supposed to take okay i think i forget just a moment huh? i forget to attach the batteries fine sorry guys <laughs> otherwise i would have not seen me anymore okay uh, so that's it now the next
So next thing is here. Uh, we covered the. Let's see. So if anyone have any questions, they can uh, go ahead and ask. Not a problem for me. I will definitely answer. Select the wrong one. Yeah. So tips for the freshers to get job. In the, uh, any tips for the freshers to get jobs in the cloud and DevOps? Uh, I will definitely say maybe after say five minutes because. Uh, I have to cover other things. Like how can you get hands on an AWS create free account, paid service that way? You have to create an AWS account with your uh, the debit credit card. I think the debit is not allowed. Debit card or maybe bank account for Indian cases. Yeah, so you can go and uh, then then you can uh, create the service uh, and then. After experimenting it, delete them immediately. You will not get much cost. Okay. Then uh, other questions. Kozik saying, uh, unlike in OS, these services are disabled. How can you enable based on your requirements? You can. Enable. Yeah, that is true. Okay. Now let's quickly cover the other services. I don't have much time. AWS Lambda. AWS Lambda is kind of a more of a serverless service, which ultimately see. If you have one application constantly running in a server, you have to pay a lot for that, isn't it? Now, if the users base are kind of sometimes they're requesting in the service, sometimes not. So it's an event based more of that. So sometimes it's happening. In that case, it's much better to have Lambda in place for that API. It could be or maybe some function auto triggering and all. Use a Lambda instead of uh, a constant application. You can use uh, API Gateway for Lambda for the API development. Or maybe say from you are uploading one S3 file as soon as the file getting uploaded, you want to get notification, or you want to process the file. Those kind of things you can do via the AWS Lambda. And AWS so go for the definition part. AWS Lambda is serverless compute service that let you run the code without provisioning or managing servers. So that is the most important part. You don't have to manage server. You don't have to pay for the cost now managing servers and all because. It's not constantly running, so you are paying less. So serverless means not like no server. It's more of like using less servers. That is serverless. AWS Lambda is a serverless service. Okay, uh, with Lambda you can run uh, virtually any type of application on a backend service with all zero administration. Uh, just upload a zip file or container image, or Lambda automatically will allocate and computing is good power. Run your code based on the incoming request event or any traffic source. Point to focus here: uh, native language support at Node.js, Java, C Sharp. Uh, go python ruby powershell uh, cost you have to see uh, in the cost section just in the the place where i'm showing you the ecd cost itself you can check the uh, this lambda cost also lambda edge suppose you i think told you about the edge locations right where the file can be nearer to the persons similar logic the function will stay to near the people and if user want to perform some uh, functionality say some dynamic content generation or maybe some request response scenarios, you can do it a lot faster if it's near to the user. That's where the concept came. Lambda H it will be near, it's a near user level execution of the services, but the cost will be a bit higher. Remember that part. Yeah, if you want to do serverless, uh, like Lambda development, my personal suggestion is to learn serverless demo. It will make your life a lot easier. Okay, I'm not showing a demo on that. It will take a lot of time. The cloud font. I have a few a lot to cover. So I will just now overview cover. Anyway, I will share the docs so overview. CloudFront, I think I talked about that uh, CloudFront is a kind of catch system to make sure that the file the user requesting it's uh, get to them much more faster. They don't have to wait for, suppose in the US, they don't have to wait for the file to come from US to their Kolkata or near places. Instead, it will create a catchy to your local edge location, say in the Kolkata or in the Mumbai. So the request response can be a more, much more faster phase. That way, user will see a much better UI. User experience will happen. Uh, so this kind of uh, this all the information I'll be any anyway. I'll send you the uh, this document. Maybe in the if you're watching in the uh, YouTube description, if see, I send you the YouTube uh, link in the description also, you'll find the link. You have the CloudWatch. Now you have a lot of instances. The so EC2 instances. Maybe the Lambda. Uh, how is functioning? Triggering. You need the logs to analyze the find out the errors some anomaly, some bug fixing and all. In all those cases, you can keep the logs in CloudWatch, keep the alerts or event data, or the matrix data, everything inside CloudWatch. So it's a metric collection service or monitoring service for you. 
where you can check all that i, I think i should show you these guys because the important part is should be explained i need to, i need to explain you just a moment and uh, this is the space so go to the cloud watch see this is the cloud watch dashboard and if you run a lot of services here a lot of ec2 instance you can see the cpu how much it is utilizing uh, how much your uh, network output and all you can see all that data here so let it load i hope i have some resources to show you guys this is not much resources anyway uh, so if i go down i can create a dashboard so you can just have to create a dashboard and uh, there is an error just a moment let it load so i have one ec2 right let me show you the ec2 uh, how like how to track the ec2 that will be good thing it's not loading that faster anyway and using cloudwatch the main functionalities are in the so let's go to the cloudwatch home then let me show you is it instance running click on the ec2 instance and this is a monitoring part you can see the alarms the logs the metrics the events you can get all that i don't know maybe they are uh, okay monitoring services are there okay so you can see all the metrics like cpu usage the status and all coming from the your cloud watch so network throughput network peace if you want now by default the memory utilization is not get tracked by the uh, cloud watch you have to enable the agent to track the memory logs you can do it okay you can see all the alarms and all i have set that is there uh, the logs if you have any you can have get the logs inside or logs groups you can see the you can see the matrix all matrix here okay like uh, see evas or all that you can see it here for the events any events if you have set the rules and all you can see all the events here application monitoring new if you running application monitoring enable that for any service you can see that so you can see all that from this cloud watch you can see create the dashboard i didn't have created that's so why i cannot show you it will take some time but you could have done done all that from here okay that's a very important to keep the check of everything if any anomaly happens you want to make sure you want to see more details of the data okay so that's a very important this one now next part is the click on that simple email service suppose you want to send the email to people uh, say the email you get from me okay that's actually coming from uh, coming uh, via the aws simple email service or acs uh, i'm just supplying the email your email id as to the target email then the content html uh, in the content and uh, then i'm giving to you but make sure your domain is very you have to verify your domain you have to verify the uh, is uh, that uh, some some protocol you have to verify mainly the domain verification and a mode of some dns record verification i think i should show you guys it will be much more better in that way so ses just for example see sample email service See the domain I had to verify. Then only I can start sending from my email. This is my this is my wife's email, but this is my email. I had to verify the domain, and then only I can send. I can see the same statistics like how many email I'm sending. See four thousand twenty five emails sent from my side. Uh, like reputation dashboard, how many so how many are uh, bounce rate? Try to send not coming. Anyone complaining against me? No, you guys never complained against against me. That's why. Uh, if I had a regular IPs, that thing SMTP settings, 
I am using SMTP protocol to send the emails. So that is also important. Uh, you have to use your SMTP credential to send the emails. You need to have a library in the application that can support all that. So th those things you have to make sure you configure. Then only you can do all this kind of stuff. Again, you have to make sure point of focus, domain verification using the record. ACS can be used for both sending and receiving emails. Email can be sent by the ACS console. Of course, SMTP protocol, what it is and how to utilize the ACS API using AWS DQ or AWS CLI. The core concept, ACS MTP, event delivery, reputation, bounds, global uh, separation list deliveries, open. Just I'm showing, I shown just a few seconds back, right? Cost, 62,000 emails are free. So it's not costing me anything to send you email. Anyway, and after that every uh, thousand email and receiving thousand email, uh, you are receiving free uh, then the cost per email. So then only you will get start charging. So remember that part. Simple notification supports you. So Amazon simple notification system uh, service you have to use. When you want to send the SMS, you have to send the push notification. In those cases, you use that. So <clears throat> the point to focus here, it's a more of an event driven system. Uh, and uh, you want to even to even uh, one service to service communication that also can be achievable via the SMS service. It's more suitable will be the SQS, but this is also a good way. So Amazon uh, similar equation, uh, the definition part is fully managed machine service of both application to application and application to person. So A to P communication. So mainly push notification SMS for that cases or maybe email sending also you can utilize the Amazon SES. Amazon simple queue service. Uh, this is more of the service to service uh, kind of mechanism. So, may, so let's go by the definition. So Amazon simple queue service is SQS is fully managed message queuing uh, service that enables you to decouple the scale mic and microservices or distributed system uh, or serverless application. SQS eliminates the complexity and overhead associated with managing and uh, operating message oriented middleware. This empires focus. So suppose one request came, okay? And that request need to be, go to the pool of the kind of EC2 instances. So, and for that cases, that EC2 instances that keep pulling of the pending uh, request. Once one instance available, whatever instance available, will pull that, process it, and it will again, the next whatever in the query, it will start the processing. That's how it works, okay? So keep going to focus, the standard and FIFO queuing for polling, the message encryption, the message attributes, message timers, long polling versus short polling, visibility timeout, date later cost, delay cost, cost allocation time. These are the points you can search in Google and learn about that. This is important points. Integration, SNS can be easily included any other AWS services, especially AWS EC2, Lambda, other services um, to active uh, even greater scalability and loose coupling infra goals. Uh, monitoring SQS query using CloudWatch, SQS API call using the cloud trend to automate and uh, to get you like more overview of what happening. Charge, it charge 1 million, uh, charge per 1 million SQL request by depends on the type of the data transfer cost that you engage. Okay. Again, for the cost part, go to the cost calculator. You can see the update one because cost always update and you cannot say, if I say something now, maybe in the minute it get changed. So I cannot tell that in the cost. AWS, oh, no, this is the kind of uh, final slide. So AWS DevOps Service Tools, AWS Code Commit, Code Build, Code Deploy, Code Commit, you have to learn. And uh, what is Code Commit? Is the mode of the code storage like GitHub, Bitbucket, uh, GitLab, that kind of service. Code Build, think about as a Jenkins build service. If you don't know Jenkins, go to my YouTube channel. There's a practical session I have developed for you guys, really available course on um, Jenkins. That Jenkins, uh, like how, what is Jenkins? how to less Jenkins, how to configure Jenkins and all that I've covered there. So similar Jenkins, but it's serverless version. So server is completely better service, you can say. So code build, you can say how uh, you have a container, a dockerization kind of concept here. In that container, you say, I want to use this container and process certain kind of, uh, run some certain kind of commands to have a final build. Suppose a Node.js application or maybe the it's a Python application. So Python and Node, you need to install all the modules first, then you need to test the application. That to happen, this uh, code deploy serve as both the build tool as well as the testing tool. Then if the test pass, then only go to the deployment phase. The code deploy, code deploy is a service that help you deploy your application in the server and something wrong happen, it has a mechanism to automatic, either automatically rollback or you can manually rollback. Code 
is like instead of code pipe uh, code pipe i am writing a code commit i will rectify that for later anyway so code pipe is a fully managed continuous workflow service so workflow means uh, it first do pull the source code then should the build happens then should get deployed so this is a workflow right that workflow you can define is in the code pipe like that's what it is devops tools again this devops tools session is completely covered in my youtube channel go to my youtube channel search by sandeep das and i think you might be already know about that and the very first uh, section of my uh, channel you will see devops learn devops with sandeep there first thing is the devops with aws and you can learn all that in a detailed way okay i have covered our hours of session go one by one learn all that and it will be in the good ends so yes i have covered within 2 hours <laughs> so yeah so i hope you guys like it and if you have any questions uh it's okay i will be staying 5 minutes more to answer all your questions uh kem okay. any question you can go ahead and ask i know many of all you live is 2 hours is not a short time it's a long time still if anyone have any questions you can ask me now or you can ask me later you can send me emails okay this is not a problem i can answer the emails later whenever i get chance okay i hope you guys like the session i know it's kind of a big session but i wanted to cover the course properly then the overview and everything now aws have lot of services lot of lot of if i start covering all the services it may be an one week day and night i should not be able to still i will be not able to cover all that that big it is that's why in my youtube channel i cover one by one all the topics uh, and i hope that i cover the most important points any questions you can ask me now or if it's fine you can ask me you can ask me uh, in linkedin or directly to my mail uh, don't forget to subscribe my channel if you're not done already i highly suggest that and uh, additional part is that uh, tomorrow i'm going to release i think i'm tired today so tomorrow i'm going to release the dbc and subnetting part your subnetting i want to make it super clear like anything you should be able to catch anything on the vbc and uh, subnetting parts that i have covered in my upcoming session okay i think that's it everyone have a nice day ahead i know making sunday as a class like so one day you guys have still i'm covering that but understand i also have this only my holiday if i'm giving my effort to teach then also give you 100% to learn see ultimately my end goal is to like you guys get succeed in any job the problem happen in uh, normal questions they cover over you and they left but they don't answer the question and all uh, my motto is to give the answered question as much as possible there are uh, hundreds of not say thousand thousand at the beginning is supposed to have happening i handle that now it's 100 hundred message still unanswered and i'm trying that still feel free to ask me any question whenever i get chance i will answer okay thank you thank you everyone i hope you had a nice day